Leader of the Opposition. No. My, <laughs> yeah, that's it. My question is to the Minister for Small Business. Minister, are you aware that the Ryan FEC was approached by the Queensland Division of the Liberal Party to implement the same GST scam it had implemented in your FEC of Groom? Are you aware that the Ryan FEC pointedly refused to implement the scam on the basis that it was potentially illegal? Minister, given that the rank and file members in Ryan had the courage to stand up to your state office, why Le didn't you, the, the senior Queensland Liberal MP, also have the courage the and decency? The Leader of the Opposition, I had noted the questions the Leader of the Opposition was asking, and I cannot see how the business of the Ryan FEC is the, minister, is the business of the Minister for. It, when I have concluded my statement, I could not see how the Minister for Small Business, as a member of the Groom FEC, had any control over the activities of the Ryan FEC. The Leader of the Opposition. To, to that point of order, Mr Speaker, or the question that you have effectively asked me, the point is this, Mr Speaker. Uh, the, in the answers that he has been giving to questions over the last couple of days, he has been claiming he has been in the hands. Of, uh, and, his, and his electorate council has been in the hands of the Queensland State Branch of the Liberal Party. And that has prohibited him from upholding the standards that are required of him as a minister. And what I'm pointing out here is the fact that the, another of those electoral divisions had precisely the same instructions, behaved the precisely correctly, leader of the opposition, and why did he— The Leader he? of the Opposition will resume his seat. Leader of the House on a point of order. Well, I put it to you, Mr. Speaker. It is as uh, plain as the nose on your face that this is well outside the ministerial responsibilities. Uh, it's, uh, I invite you, Mr. Speaker, to give exactly the same ruling as you did earlier. Uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, the question is obviously out of order and should be ruled accordingly. Well, if we, I have, may, we have members on this side who the uh, of have the questions House. to ask, Mr. Speaker. The Leader of the House, my mother may not be impressed with your analogy, but uh, that aside. I do believe that my ruling is entirely consistent with the ruling I gave earlier. The, the Leader of the Opposition on a point of order. It may be a ruling as yet, Mr Speaker. I thought you were about to make one. Mr, no. Mr. Speaker, I will hear the Leader the, of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, the last paragraph which I was reading, I believe, would make it completely clear to you and to the House that this was within the responsibilities that have been assumed for the last three or four days in this place by the uh, member concerned. And that leader paragraph the, says this. The Leader of the Opposition. You may not have heard it because of the hubbub when I was trying to read it. Well, well, Minister, the given the rank and file members in Ryan had the courage to stand up to your state I office, am hearing the leader of the why didn't last you, paragraph? as senior Queensland Liberal MP, also have the courage and decency to shut down the groom GST scam? 100 per cent of the what his responsibilities are. Yeah. Leader the um, I thought the Leader of the House was seeking the call. Well, I was, because uh, what was being put to you was uh, debating material after you had made a ruling. And, Mr Speaker, we I only now invite Leader you to uh, follow through seat. on the ruling. Consistent, consistent with the ruling I gave earlier, I did not see how the member for Groom could have any authority or control over the activities of either Liberal Party branches, the FEC, or members of the Ryan electorate, and for that reason I had ruled the question out of order. The <laughs> Just before the I before I recognise the Leader of the Opposition, I am not denying him the opportunity clearly to move dissent. Does the member for Macon have a point of order? The, no. I have a question. Mr. Member for Macon will resume his seat. The Leader of the Opposition. <coughs> the you won't be waiting long, Member for Prospect, unless you remember your status in the House currently. The Leader of the House. The point of order, Mr Speaker, is you've ruled the question out of order. You have not recognised the Leader of the Opposition, and under the Convention you should look to your right, and a member is on her feet seeking the call to ask a question. The Leader of the House. I, the Leader of the House, I did in fact. The Leader of the Opposition resume his seat. The Leader of the House, 
I ruled the question out of order. The Leader of the Opposition then rose and said, I move dissent from your ruling. Um, that they were the sequence of events. For that reason, I had recognised the Leader of the Opposition and had only interrupted him because of the reasonable presumption that the member for Macon, who was on her feet, may have had a point of order. The Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I do this with very great reluctance, Mr Speaker, to move this. And in order to fully comprehend this uh, debate on a dissent from your ruling, let me read you the question that you have. I have. I have. Well, thank you very much. I think you need to talk to when Dr Theophilus the about order, politics again. The Treasurer, the dissent has been moved. The Leader of the Opposition has the call. The question was this. Minister, are you aware that the Ryan FEC was approached by the Queensland Division of the Liberal Party to implement the same GST scam that it implemented in your FEC of Groom? Are you aware that the Ryan FEC pointedly refused to implement the scam on the basis that it was potentially illegal? Now, for the last three days in Parliament, Mr uh, Speaker, Questions have been asked to the Minister for Small Business on precisely the affairs of his FEC, which are relevant in this chamber, not simply because they are the affairs of his FEC, but because, as Minister for Small Business, he has a particular charter from this government to understand the complaints and concerns that small business have of the operation of the goods and services tax. Indeed, you will recollect, Mr Speaker, that a, that a memo has been leaked and uh, dealt with previously in this parliament, in which he at some length addressed the Cabinet on the subject of the difficulties that small business were experiencing with the goods and services tax. He brought that submission before the Cabinet, and uh, it included within it uh, the possibility that suggestions would ultimately be made to Cabinet about the actual operation of the tax system itself, because the government had asked him to do so. He is not the only minister. The Treasurer is not the only minister in this place Leader of the who has resumed his seat. The Leader of the House. Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition has a, a very tight remit. He has to take the words of the question and then specify how those words fall within the ministerial responsibility. Uh, the, the, no, you're not. No, no. What, the, you, what you are talking about are, are the matters regimes. within the responsibility of the minister. What you've got to do is show how the question, Mr. Speaker, I put it to you. He's got to show how the question fits within the responsibility of the minister. We don't need a lecture on the minister's whatever responsibilities the, may, the minister may have. We need a specific statement, and the, the standing orders require that he sticks to that in this motion. Leader of the opposition, the leader of the opposition has the call. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mr. Speaker. To that point of order, that is precisely what I'm doing. The, if you had I'm not been doing it, I would have intervened. Thank the leader you, of the opposition yeah, yeah, yeah. has you, the Mr. call. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So let me continue as I was in establishing the responsibility of the Minister for Small Business for the GST system. He is, of course, not the principal minister responsible for it. Who is the treasurer? And there are assistant treasurers, but other ministers have been given explicit responsibilities, and it includes him. Includes him. He has the responsibility for listening to small business on this, according to his own cabinet submission, and bringing those matters before the cabinet, and making suggestions to the cabinet on how relief might be offered to small business. And that includes, Mr. Speaker, that includes the operation of the business activity statement. Oh, Leader of the House. Speaker, my point of order is based on the. And I don't have the full draft of the question, which I'd appreciate if there's a spare. But the opening words were: Are you aware that the Ryan FEC was approached, etc.? In other words, it was a question that went to the internal affairs of the Ryan Federal Electric Committee. Now, Mr Speaker, what the uh, Leader of the Opposition has got to, got to do is to show how the question fits within the ministerial responsibilities. And uh, he, has, he, has not even, he has not even approached the subject matter, Mr Speaker. Uh, the fact is he, he doesn't well I, I'll, I'll, I would of course put to you the reason he hasn't, but the fact is his obligation 
is to refer to he's got to refer to the organisation of the Liberal Party in an adjoining electorate or other electorate and demonstrate how the affairs of an FEC outside of the minister's uh, uh, portfolio responsibilities are somehow related to them. And, Mr. Speaker, he has not even started the leader of the House to approach made that his point issue. Of order. He is therefore clearly out of the order. The leader of the House has made his point of order. The leader of the opposition, it struck me, was mounting an argument, whether I like it or not, that seemed consistent with the dissent. The leader of the opposition. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, as I go on to say, and, and thank you for uh, for that uh, dealing with the the question in that way. Uh, the responsibilities of the Minister for Small Business are amply seen in that leaked Cabinet document. You have sent the Minister for Small Business, the Government has sent the Minister for Small Business around the country devising recommendations for the Government on how the implementation of that tax system might be made easier for them. And there are many people in small business, uh, Mr Speaker, and particularly many in charitable small businesses, who would be very grateful if the sort of operation conducted by the Groom FEC was an operation available to them, which is precisely why we've been asking the question of the opposition within his seat. ministerial I name the me the member for Prospect will excuse herself from the House under the provisions of 304A. The Leader of the House. Speaker, my point of order is um, uh, that the um, question of tax reform generally. Uh, or the question of tax reform and its impact on small business uh, is unrelated to the matter before the chair, which is that your ruling uh, of, uh, to, uh, in respect of the question uh, is to be dissented from. To establish that proposition, Mr Speaker, uh, the Leader of the Opposition has to advance argument uh, to the proposition, namely, that the question was within the confines of the standing orders that could be asked. Mr Speaker, you knocked it out, and unless he starts putting forward that proposition, which he has not even as yet done so, uh, he, is, the House. he is clearly the out the House of order. Mr. His seat. I'll listen to the Leader of the Opposition. Leader of the Opposition. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. I do believe it is necessary in moving dissent from your ruling, and clearly the way in which you have ruled, and I appreciate it, enables me to do this, that uh, <coughs> to establish a level of ministerial responsibility for the goods and services tax, so we can move from that to establish the reason why he has been subject to the questioning he has been about the affairs of his FEC and why a compare and contrast with the affairs of another FEC, of another FEC, a question Leader about the House, that, and a compare and contrast done with his FEC amounts to a question within the standing orders and therefore a justification for a dissent, ruling, a dissent motion from a ruling which ruled the question out of order. So I have been, in the remarks I have made to this point, establishing with ample clarity the fact that the government regards the Minister for Small Business as a person who reports to them on suggestions which might be made to changes in the way in which the goods and services tax operates, and therefore the organisation of a scheme within his Federal Electric Council and the operations of a scheme elsewhere are directly relevant to the concerns that he has as Minister for Small Business. So, as I said, the opening part of the uh, question that I asked, the opening paragraph, established the relationship between the Ryan FEC and the scam which has been the subject of continual questioning over the course of the last three parliamentary sitting days. And the paragraph went on from the first part of the paragraph that the minister in intervening referred to. Minister, are you aware that the Ryan FEC was approached by the Queensland Division of the Liberal Party to implement the same GST scam 
It had been implemented, that had been implemented in your FEC of Groom. That is the scam that we have been questioning the minister on for the last few days. And then it goes on, are you also aware that the Ryan FEC pointedly refused to implement the scam on the basis that it was potentially illegal? Now, why is that relevant? Well, that is relevant, Mr Speaker, because questions asked of this minister have been answered by the minister to defend himself by saying, look, even though I have responsibility as a minister, even though I am a member of the government, the Ryan FEC, as can be seen from my conversations with the vice president of the central executive and others about this matter, has been operating on the directions of the executive by implication, therefore without the capacity on its own initiative to deal with the problem. That was part of an 11-minute or no, 15-minute defence in question time yesterday and two answers on a censure motion. Part of his defence, he doesn't disclaim responsibility for the GST as part of his defence, but part of his defence rests on the assumption that uh, he is powerless or if it is irrelevant to him. That he Leader is of the House. That's precisely what I'm doing. The leader of the opposition has the That is precisely the what I'm doing. And that uh, the state executive takes these matters out of his hands. We think it's an inadequate defence. We think it's a pathetic defence. We think it's an outrageous defence, and so does the rest of the public. But the point of the matter is, it is his defence. It is his defence. And therefore, this alleged powerlessness on his part when contrasted with what was determined by the Ryan FEC, demonstrates quite completely, which is why we ask the question, that he had an ambit, an area of discretion to revolt against himself personally the illegal directions of the Queensland Central Executive. I would remind all members of the House that points of order, while a matter of irritation to the chair, no matter which side they come from, it strikes me there's a very un anything but an even-handed approach taken to the reception of points of order, depending on which side rises. The Leader of the House. To, uh, speak out the uh Leader the member for Burke is well aware of the strategy, having exercised it himself on a number of occasions. The Leader of the House. Uh, the Leader of the Opposition is developing an argument, which is that the uh, Minister had certain courses of action available to him. Mr. Speaker, regardless of whether he had courses of action available to him, the issue before you is a dissent motion. And the only matters that can be put before you are whether or not the words contained in the question, which formed the substance of your ruling, uh, were appropriate questions. Uh, under the standing orders, uh, as usual, and as has been the from the very business. opening remarks from the leader of the opposition, he has failed to demonstrate in any way or be relevant to the basic question the uh, of the on House a dissent made motion. Point of order. He should therefore, in this regard, in the submission he's putting to you now, be ruled out of order, the and he should be asked to come back. Not that he's been to it. The, the point leader of at the House hand. Resume his seat. I warn the member for Burke. Matters of dissent from the chair's ruling are clearly always difficult for the chair. And for that reason, some latitude had been extended. Leader of the Opposition. Leader of the Opposition. The Leader of the Opposition, the manager of the Leader of the House would be well aware that whether my ruling was correct or in order, the latitude extended to one side of the House has always been extended to the other. Consistently, the Leader of the Opposition. You're going to start on my daughter. Is that what you're going to start on? You're going to start on my daughter. That's the reality. The leader of the, I will deal with the Leader of the House if I need to, and I will deal with the Leader of the Opposition if he responds to those interjections, as he's aware. The Leader of the Opposition We'll come back to the no, point Mr. of order. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I am keeping within the framework of a dissent motion. 
Leader of the Opposition, I have not frustrated you in no, any you way. Haven't. No, you and haven't. you will return to the motion and to the no, matter before the House. The standing orders when it comes to a, an objection to the Speaker's ruling are actually quite limited in terms of their coverage and therefore allow an argument to be made as to why it is relevant. The objection, if any objection in Standing Order 100 is taken to any ruling of the Speaker, such objection must be taken at once and a motion of dissent be submitted in writing, moved, which if seconded shall be proposed to the House and debate thereon shall proceed forthwith. Well, Mr Speaker, it is limited. I understand that. It is not limited to the point of ridiculousness but it is limited to the necessity to make absolutely clear why the particular question is uh, relevant to the particular minister to whom it has been directed, because that is the subject of the ruling in this case. And the point about uh, that, uh, that ruling, uh, which uh, we are contesting here, is that this minister has been answering questions on precisely these matters for some considerable period of time. And what was being done here was to do a compare and contrast with uh, what uh, was done in another FEC in response to precisely the same problem that he, as a minister himself, confronted. And so that went to the second paragraph. We dealt with the first paragraph, it went to the second. Are you also aware that the Ryan FEC pointedly refused to implement the scam on the basis that it was potentially illegal. Now, that particular scam has already been established as relevant to him. That particular scam, which operated in his FEC, was in fact a scam organised centrally by the state executive, which some electorate councils implemented and his did not. And he the member has for Batman, the member for Kingsford Smith, member he, for Batman. Both members are somewhat out of my range. The member for Batman. <laughs> Leader of the opposition. He has specific responsibility. He has specific responsibility for his and under his obligations as a minister of state, under his, to deal truthfully with the public, under his obligations, under his obligations as a minister for small business to handle effectively the goods and services tax, under his obligations as a minister for small business to deal with the concerns that small businesses the have for is about the impact of the tax that is on them. And that is why we House. had, as that second position, are you also aware that the Ryan FEC pointedly refused to implement the scam on the basis that it was potentially illegal? And then it goes on in the final paragraph, which was rather lost in the welter of howling and screaming on the other side of the House. Minister, Given the rank and file members in Ryan had the courage to stand up to your state office, why didn't you? Now, leader Mr. of the House, the leader of the opposition has the call. Well, I, I might say, I might say, Mr. Speaker, that the member for Prospect is now cooling her heels for not one half of what the I leader of the House has been doing. Not one half of it. And, uh, Mr. Speaker, I so might I point out to the Leader of the Opposition the Member for Prospect had been warned earlier right. in question time. I repeat the, this paragraph, which they howled down. Minister, given the rank and file members in Ryan had the courage to stand up to your state office, why didn't you, a senior Queensland Liberal MP? That really gets at the heart of it, Mr. Speaker. It really gets at the heart of it. Because what that shows is the latitude that was available to the minister to uphold his obligations under the code which the Prime Minister set down for ministers and why he is accountable in this place, both on those grounds and also on the grounds of his status as Minister for Small Business, because it establishes with absolute clarity that latitude that he had. And therefore, the question went on. As senior Queensland Liberal MP, did you not also have the courage and decency to shut down the Groom GST scam? Now, Mr. Speaker, those are front and centre the questions that he has been asked in question after question in question time. And the reason we dissent from your ruling 
is that we have been, until this point, able to deal with that issue, until this point, of the House. been able to hold that minister accountable. But when it comes to a compare and contrast between people of some courage, gumption, knowledge and understanding and his own capacity, we are unable to ask him a question. We are unable to ask him a question about that. Now, Mr. Speaker, you operate in this chair under the considerable duress. I've watched the Prime Minister put the you under the opposition. question time the today. The opposition but at the same time, time we are entitled to have our questions asked. Is, is the motion seconded? I second the motion. Reserve my right to speak. The member for Patterson. Leader of the House. Uh, Mr Speaker, the government uh, completely supports uh, your ruling. It was the only ruling available to you under the standing orders. Uh, we've just had one of the more pathetic presentations by the Leader of the Opposition. He used to be the Leader of the House, and it is incredible that someone who has had the job I've had for the last five and a half years has absolutely no idea whatsoever about the standing orders. And when he finds the himself under Patterson. a little bit of pressure, he moves a motion of dissent as a tactic when their plan today was, of course, to move a censure motion. Exactly. Well, Mr Speaker, I mean, this is just political ineptitude on an absolutely grand scale, a grand scale. And when finally he gets the chance to move his huge, politically moving, you know, incredible motion of dissent, he can't mount one argument, one argument in support of the, the proposition of the House, uh, which he thought Minister was for Defence. The, the Leader of the House will resume his seat. The member for Burke will excuse himself from the House under the provisions of 304A. The member for Chifley on a point of order. Uh, point of order, Mr. Speaker. Um, this is a uh, want of confidence in your ruling, and as been pointed out, there's a very narrow remit. The member in for terms Chifley will resume argument. his seat. The Leader of the House. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the latitude which uh, is being uh, provided. Uh, not that I uh, have as yet uh, had recourse to that latitude in my remarks. The point I make to you, Mr. Speaker, is that, by way of general introduction, and that is that. There are standing orders. Uh, the standing orders have been applied by you very fairly, and when they are applied, uh, the government, of course, will support decisions which see their application. And on this particular case, it was as clear as night follows day. One of the clearest cases you could possibly get. And furthermore, Mr. Speaker, uh, it wasn't the first time today uh, that it was necessary for you to make the point that a question to a minister had to be about a minister's responsibilities. And even though they had had a question knocked out earlier in the day, uh, the, uh, the brilliance of the tactics team on the Labor Party side still couldn't work out. They, couldn't, you know, they weren't so adaptable, their tactics weren't so uh, flexible that they could actually take into account a ruling that you'd made earlier in the day and recognise that their last question, the one that was going to bring down the minister, the question that had all the great punch was in fact out of order, uh, Mr. Speaker. I mean, to, these these are the people, Mr. Speaker, with this uh, motion of dissent Minister against you, affairs. who uh, later this year are going to proffer themselves as the alternative government. Well, Mr. Speaker, what a sick joke! What a sick joke! They don't even and cannot even uh, present a case uh, just on uh, one of the most basic elements of running the house. Uh, namely the uh, standing order that relates to ministerial responsibilities. Let me, uh, let me refer to the standing order. Questions to ministers. Questions may be put to a minister relating to public affairs with which the minister is officially connected, to proceedings pending in the House or to any matter of any administration or, sorry, or to any matter of administration for which the minister is responsible. Questions may be asked orally without notice for immediate reply or in writing on notice and placed on notice paper for written reply. So, you know, if there was any substance to the dissent motion, Mr Speaker, 
uh, what the leader of the house, uh, what the op what the leader of the opposition would have done is he would have just, first of all, read out the standing order. That's what he would have done, uh, and then he would have read out his question and he would have related one to the other. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I would myself refer to their question, uh, and I did ask the Labor Party would they mind passing me across a copy of their question just for the benefit of an informed debate. But no, this is the secret question. This is the secret question. This is the question that dare not be repeated. This is the question that can't possibly be passed over. Just as, uh, but you, you wouldn't possibly pass it over. Why? Because the last thing you want me to do is simply relate your question to the standing orders. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I mean, this is just doubly pathetic. I mean, fancy, he's got a copy of it there, and I said to the manager of opposition, pass me over a copy, and he says, like a spoiled brat, he says, oh, no, you can't have it. It's our question. You know, we're, we're so fond of our question. We're so fond of our question. We're not going to have. We're not going to let you have it available to you during uh, during a debate on a motion to dissent on the very question, the subject of this whole matter. I mean, Mr. Speaker, how juvenile can this uh, opposition be? A secret question sitting in the drawer. It's been revealed, never to be revealed again. What an embarrassment, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the uh, the Minister for Small Business. Uh, is a very good minister. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, even though I've been the minister for small business, I reckon he's one of the best ministers for small business the we've had uh, that Australia has had for many years. And uh, why do I say that? Because uh, to be an effective minister for small business, Mr. Speaker, well, I am talking about the responsibilities, Mr. Speaker, of the, the minister for small seat. business. The leader of the house will resume his seat. The Leader of the Opposition on a point of order. I make exactly the point of order, but this time yes. with relevance from that was made when I was up here speaking. What on earth has that got to do with whether or not the question is within standing orders, that these are nice guys? The Leader of the Opposition will resume his seat. The Leader the of the Opposition will resume his seat. The, I will respond to the point of order. The capacity of the Minister to do his job may have no direct relation to the censure motion of the Chair. But the reference to the Minister for Small Business is entirely relevant to the Leader. Mr Speaker, my point is exactly the same point that the Leader of the Opposition Dissent. made. Uh, when what he did was he attempted to enumerate the responsibilities of the Minister for Small Business. Well, having uh, put my forward my objections and having them overruled, Mr Speaker, I am, of course, entitled to exactly the same latitude. And the point I want to make about the Minister for Small Business is that uh, there's no question that he is a listening post for small business. There's, yeah, not, yeah. there's no question about that whatsoever. Excellent and actually, point. that is one of that is one of the strengths of his position. Yeah. Uh, but it's also true that if you read the Tax Act, he is not actually the minister that has administrative responsibility for the Tax Act. Uh, the person who has responsibility for that is either the treasurer in respect of policy matters, or alternatively, and for very good reason, the Australian Tax Office. You see, it's a, it is a common complaint we have from the opposition uh, that they want the government to be personally responsible for each and every item of tax administration. But when Labor was in power and in the whole time that we have been in power, there has been a bipartisan view that when it comes to the actual administration of the Tax Act, the only way that that can properly be done to protect the interests of citizens is to have it done under the statutory authority of the Australian uh, of the Income Tax Assessment Act and the office holder, namely the Tax Commissioner. So, Mr. Speaker, the question you have to ask is: Well, are the tax affairs not of the Groom Federal Electric Committee, but of the Ryan Federal Electric Committee? Do these fall within the ministerial responsibilities of the Minister for Small Business? Well, Mr. Speaker, I mean, is, is there anyone really on the other side who is putting their hand up for that proposition? Well, of course you would, because you're so silly you've moved a motion of dissent and you will have no choice but to support that ridiculous proposition. Uh, Mr. Speaker, they will put their hands up anywhere at any time if they think that they need to because of the consequences of their own conduct. Mr. Speaker, these people leave me breathless. They, they, leave, they virtually leave me without further to say, but I will fill up my another six minutes, Mr. Speaker. The leader of the, 
the Leader of the House to resume his seat. The Leader of the Opposition on a point of order. Mr Speaker, the point of order is sticking close to the subject which is under deliberation, under but debate. Did, so the I, I stuck Leader of the Opposition I will resume his seat. I to it, as you know. The Leader of the Opposition will resume his seat. I will listen to the I will listen closely to the Leader of the House, but my view is that to date he has been granted exactly the same latitude as was granted to the Leader of the Opposition. Leader of the House. So, Mr Speaker, whilst uh, the Parliament uh, is concerned about um, the, uh, you know, the situation off Christmas Island, in question time today, now that was the issue in Parliament today for many people in the Parliament and many people in the public, you know, a, a matter of a, a real substance. The Labor Party's question, Mr Speaker, and I refer to the motion of dissent, their question is, would you believe it's about $75.12? What? Yeah, I'm for real. No, it's not me for the real, leader, fellas. This is leader of the three House days. Will respond to interjections. Well, three days, Mr Speaker. Three days, Mr Speaker. We have had the Labor Party on the warpath over, over a matter of $75.12, and that is sort of putting it at its highest, because the fact is, as, uh, as the minister himself has said, in his own electric committee, when they held the function, they paid the caterer's bill and they paid the tax. You know, just, just, I know the facts get in the way, don't they, Mr Speaker? You know, when you're running a, when you're running a political campaign, whether it's three hours or five hours, whether you had to go to three hospitals or none, whether you were turned away or you weren't turned away, isn't it disappointing if you're in the Labor Party and the facts get in the way of the story? And, Mr Speaker, the facts, the facts which uh, the Leader of the Opposition uh, needs to uh, somehow present, and of course there aren't any in support of his argument, uh, needs to counteract the fact that within the Minister's own electorate committee, this whole issue, this so-called scam, I mean, I mean, I've heard of people who've I've heard of uh, Bottom of the Harbour. That was a tax avoidance scheme. That was, you know, there were billions of dollars. I've heard of all sorts of schemes where there are thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, and millions of dollars at stake. You know, and, and hundreds of thousands of dollars from the trade union movement to the Labor Party. Now, I call that a decent sort of scam and a fix. But, Mr. Speaker, I tell you what. I've never heard of a scam worth $75.12. This must, if, if it were a scam, Mr. Speaker, this must be the most incompetent scam to have ever raised its head. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Speaker, I go back to I go back to standing order 142. I go back to standing order 140. The leader, leader of the house has the call. I go back to standing order 142. It has to relate to public affairs with which the minister is officially connected to or proceedings pending in the House or to any matter of administration for which the minister is responsible. Well, at no stage, at no stage was the Leader of the Opposition in fact able to refer matters within the, Groom, uh, the Ryan Federal Electric Committee uh, to those three headings under the standing orders for which the minister would be responsible. Um, I can understand, and we have a lot of, we've had a lot of questions about the minister's relationship with his own Federal Electric Council, and even though that's not sort of technically within his responsibility as a minister, remembering question time is for members of parliament, opposition or others, to bring a minister to account. That's the whole idea. It's, it's not you in your. It's the not a leader minister. of the house has the call. It's not. It's not an opportunity to ask the minister, uh, you know, how well he played golf on the weekend, uh, whether or not he's been successful in some other, you know, aspect of his or her life. Question time is to ask ministers to account for what they, as ministers, do, because that is that is how they sit on this side of the house. Uh, they have uh, they have responsibilities of managing and administering uh, those functions which are provided to them when they are appointed by the Prime Minister. That, that, is why we have, that is why ministers answer questions in question time and why the opposition uh, has under the standing orders a requirement to ensure that the question relates specifically not to the minister as a personality, as, and he is a personality, I should say. Uh, look at the tie, look at the gravelly voice. 
uh, but Mr. I hear the gravelly voice, but Mr. Speaker, <laughs> these are questions which go to what the minister does as a minister. That is the reason that the standing orders is there, and that is why there have been all sorts of questions over the years ruled out of order. Um, you know, the attitude, behaviour, or actions of a member of parliament or the staff of members, matters of a private nature not related to the public duties of a minister, just to quote two out of House of Reps practice. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the government is. This is not a. This is not a grey area. This. This is the most sort of black and white uh, proposition that I've seen on a question of whether or not the question is uh, within uh, Standing Order 142. Uh, that is why, Mr. Speaker, without one hesit without any hesitation, without a skerrick of hesitation, uh, the government, of course, will support your ruling. It was completely right. It was 110 per cent right. Uh, this is just a silly bit of tactics from the Leader of the Opposition, uh, who started this whole thing last week because he brought his uh, daughter into an issue and he found that he was order. scoring a the leader of the cheap House's political time point. Has expired. The, the question is the question be put. All those of that opinion say aye. Contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. Is the division required? Ring the bells. I hope the mem manager of opposition business's remarks are not being addressed through the chair. The manager of opposition business, I'm aware of.
Lock the doors. The question is that the question be put. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair and the noes to the left. Point the honourable members for Tarangamite and Mallee tell us for the ayes. The honourable members for Port Adelaide and Maribyrnong tell us for the noes. Order. The result of the division is I 76, no 60. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. The question now is that the motion of dissent from the Speaker's ruling be agreed with. All those that opinion say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Aye. I think the noes have it. Aye. Is the division required? Division required. Ring the bells for one minute. Would members please quickly assume the seats they wish to take for the vote?
Lock the doors. Indecision on the part of the member for Leichhardt and the member for Werriwa. The question is that the motion of dissent from the Speaker's ruling be agreed with. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair and the noes to the left. I appoint the honourable members for Port Adelaide and Narrabunong tellers for the ayes and the honourable members for Karangamite and Mallee tellers for the noes. Order. The result of the division is ayes 61, no 76. The question is therefore negatived. Would members please quickly and quietly resume their seats? <coughs> Prime Minister. Further questions be placed on the notice paper. Thank the Prime Minister.